Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Welcome back to our exclusive Puerto Rico coverage here, this is theCUBE for Blockchain Unbound, the future of blockchain cryptocurrency, the decentralized web, the future of society, the world of work, et cetera, play. It's all happening right here, and we're reporting it. The global internet's coming together. My next guest is Fred Kruger, founder and CEO of a new innovative approach called WorkCoin, the future of work. He's tackling Fred. Great to see you. Thank you very much, John. So we saw each other in Palo Alto at the, at the D10E and at the Four Seasons. Caught up. Uh, yeah. We're Facebook friends. We're LinkedIn friends. Um, just a quick shout out to you. I saw you live streaming Brock Pierce's keynote today, which I thought was phenomenal. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great. Great keynote. work. Yeah. Um, and it's Pi Day. <laughs> it's Pi Day. And I'm a mathematician, so <laughs> it's my day. <laughs> it's, it's Geek Day. We, it's Geek Day. All us nerds are celebrating. Yep. So, Fred, before we get into work, Corn, I just want yep. to get your thoughts on the Brock Pierce keynote. Um, I took a video of it without shit with my shaky camera, but I thought the content was great. You have it up on Facebook on your feed, I just shared it. What was your takeaway um, of his message? Uh, I thought it was unedited, obviously. No New York Times spin here. Right. No. Uh, look, it's, well, first of all, it's very authentic. You know, I've known Brock 10 years, and, uh, you know, I think those of us who have known Brock a long time know that he's changed, you know, and, now, he became very rich and he's giving away and he really means the best. So yeah. it's completely from the heart and uh, there's, it's 100% real. You know, being in the media business kind of by accident, and I'm not a media journalist by training, we're all about the data, we open our data, as everyone knows, we share the free content. I saw the New York Times article yep. about him and I just saw it twisted. Yeah. Okay? The social justice warriors out there just aren't getting the kind of social justice that he's actually trying to do. So you've known him for 10 years. Yep. I see it as clear as day. When, you, right. when it's unfiltered, you say, here's a guy who's eccentric, smart, rich now, paying it forward. Yep. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, look, I think that the... the what's, whatever, what is everyone missing? You know, I think everybody is, everybody, there's a, there's a little jealousy. I mean, let's be honest, you know, I think that there's, peop, people resent a little bit, and I think part of it's the cryptocurrency world's fault. You know, when your symbol of success is the Lamborghini, uh, you know, that's, you know, it's sort of like, this is the most garish kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> success-driven, money-oriented crowd. And it reminds me a little bit of the domain name kind of yeah. people. Yeah. And so, you know, but Brock's ironically not at all that. So I mean, he's, you look, he's kind of, you know. If you look at the ad tech world yeah. and the domain name world, because yeah. they're all kind of tied together, I won't say underbelly, but fast and loose would be kind of the way I would describe it. Initially, yes, ad tech, right? So if you look at ad tech back in say, I don't know, 2003, 2004, it was like gunslingers, right? Yeah. Everybody, you, you wanted to buy some impressions, you'd go yeah. to a guy, the guy would be like, I got some choice impressions, bro. Yeah. I'll sell you a watch too while I'm Yeah, that. exactly, that, that was the <laughs> ad tech world, right? And that world was basically replaced by Google and Facebook, yeah. right? Who now control 80% of the inventory and it's, Pretty much, you know, you go to a screen, it's all self-service, and that's it. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the case in cryptocurrencies, but right now, you know, initially you sort of have this uh, yeah. sort of wild west. Well, anytime phenomenon. you got anytime you got alpha geeks yeah. and major infrastructure application developer shift happening, right. which is happening, you kind of look at these key inflection points. You need you need to kind of have a, a strong community. Um, Self-policing policy. If you look at the original DNS days, because you remember, I was there too. Yep. John Postal, you know, yeah. uh, rest in peace, Godspeed, we all right. know what he did. Vince Cerf with TCP IP. The core dudes and gals back then, they were tight. So any kind of, you know, new entrants that came in had to prove their worth. Right. I won't say that they were the most welcoming, because they were nervous of people to infect the early <laughs> formation but yeah. also they're guys, they're nerds. Right, so I think if you look back at domain names, you know, like back in the day, a lot of people don't know this, but John Postel actually kept the, the list of domain names in the text file, right? So, you know, and that, you basically wanted a domain name, you called John up and you said, I'd like my name added to the DNS. And yeah. he would be like, okay, let me add it to the text yeah. file. You know, so again, these things all start in a very sort of, uh, sort of anarchic way. 
Yep. And but now, they, get, they get commercial. It gets SAIC, commercial. And it gets, Network exactly. Solutions, Verisign, we all know the history. I can, right. can. controlled by the Department of Commerce up until a certain point in time. Uh, until about four years ago, really. So yeah. this is moving so fast. You yeah. know, you're a student of the industry. You're also doing a startup called right. WorkCoin. What is the formula for success? What is your strategy? What are you guys doing at WorkCoin? Take a minute to explain what you guys are well, doing, your team, yes. your approach. So let's start with the problem, right? So if you look at freelancing right now, everybody knows that a lot of people freelance. I don't think people understand how many people freelance. There's 57 million people in America who freelance. So it's close to, it's close to 50% of us don't actually have jobs other than freelancing. And so, you know, this is a slow moving train, yeah. but it's, it's basically moving in the direction of more freelancers, and we're going to cross the 50% mark. And, and that's and only going to get bigger because of virtual work. Yeah. The global workforce, no boundaries. Right, and so it's a, it's a global phenomenon, right? Yeah. Freelancing is just going up and up and up. Now, you would think in this world, there would be something like Google where you could sit there and go type patent attorney, and you could get 20 patent attorneys that would be competing <laughs> for your business, right? <laughs> and each one would have their price, and you could just click and hire a patent attorney, right? Yeah. Is that the case? No. No, okay. Oh, I need a patent attorney. Okay, so uh, what if you have to hire a telegram manager for your telegram channel? Can you find those just by Googling telegram manager? No, yeah. you know? So basically, if you're- The user expectation is different than the infrastructure can deliver it. Right. That's what you're basically saying. No, what I'm saying is it should be that way. Yeah. It is not that way. And the reason it's not that way is that basically there's no economics to do that with credit cards. So if you're building a marketplace where kind of these people are, find each other, you need to have, uh, you need the economics to make sense. And when you're being charged 3.5% each way, plus you have to worry about chargebacks, buyer fraud, and everything else, yeah. you can't build a marketplace that's open and transparent. It's just not possible. Yeah. And I realized six months ago that with crypto, you actually could. And yeah. so, not that it's going to be necessarily easy, but technically it is possible. It, there's zero marginal costs. Once, once I, I, I'm taking in crypto, I'm paying out crypto in, in a sort of open marketplace where I can actually see the person. So I can hire John Furrier, not John F. Right? But why don't I just go to LinkedIn? This is what someone might say. Well, uh, <laughs> if you go to LinkedIn, first of all, the person there might not be in the market, probably is not in the market for a specific service, right? You can yeah. go there, then you need to message them, right? And you just say, hey, your profile looks great. Do you want to be a, I noticed you're a patent attorney. You yeah. want to file this patent for me? And then you have to negotiate. There's it's no, not a transactional mechanism, It's a lot of right? steps. It's not transactional, right? Okay. So it's not a, it's not click, buy, fund, engage, you know? So that it, it, it just doesn't work that way, right? So this is a very, it's just like such a big elephant in the room problem, yeah. you know, that everybody has these problems. Nobody can find these good freelancers. Yeah. So you end up, what do you end up doing? You end up going to Facebook and you go, hey, does anybody know any good patent attorneys? Yeah. That's, how, that's what you do. That's a bounty. Well, kind it's of, kind of, yeah. It's, it's kind, kind of, of a social bounty. Hey, hi, hey friends. Yeah. Does anyone know so anything? So it's social proof, right? So, yeah. which is another thing that's very important because if, if John, if Hold you on, were, take, a, yeah. take a minute to explain what social proof is for the folks. All right, I mean, so I, social proof is just a simple concept that it's a recommendation coming from somebody that you know, right, and trust. So, for example, I may not be interested in your video services, John, but it, I know you, right, and I am in the business of a graphic designer. And you're like, Fred, I know this amazing graphic designer, yeah. and she's relatively cheap. Okay, well that's probably good enough for me to at least Start yeah. looking at her work and, 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 and going the next step. On the other hand, if I'm just looking at 100 graphic designers, I do not know. It's customized contextual data around a specific transaction from a trusted source. Yeah, it's, so it's you're just, socially connected to or related. Sort of think about this as it, it doesn't even have to be a, a source that you know, it could be just a source that you know of, right? Yeah. So to use the Brock example again, you know, Brock's probably not going to be selling his services on our, my platform, but what if he recommends somebody? And, you know, people like giving the gift of recommendation. Yeah. You know, so Brock knows a lot of people are, may not be doing as well as him, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, this guy could be a fantastic guy to hire as a social media manager, for yeah. example. You know, helping out a guy needs a little bit of work. And know? endorsement's a ma major thing. Endorsing, and it, it is giving something, right? You're giving your own brand by saying, okay. I stand behind this person. All right, so talk about where you are with WorkCoin. Obviously, people might not know your yeah. background. If you check them out on LinkedIn, okay. Fred Krueger, mathematician, Stanford PhD, 
um, well-educated from a centralized organization like Stanford, has a good reputation. Um, okay, yeah. You're a math guy. Is there math involved? Obviously blockchain's math related, you got crypto. Yeah, I mean, How are you guys building this out? Share a little bit of, right. if you can, show a little leg on the tech. Yeah, so the, well, uh, the tech is sort of simple. Like, so basically the way it is, is it's right now it's built in Google Cloud, right? But we have an interface where you can fund the thing, and so it's built, first of all, that's the first thing. So we built it on web and mobile. Um, and you can basically fund your, your buy work coins from the platform itself using Ethereum, and also we've integrated with Sensei, a different token. Yep. So we can integrate with different tokens. So you're using these tokens to fund the coin, to fund your account, right? And then uh, you once you have the, the tokens in your account, you can then buy services with them, right? And then the service provider, the minute that they are deliver, they finish the delivery of the service to your expectation, they get the uh, coin in their account, and then they can transfer that coin back into Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever to cash out. Okay, so now that product's built, is yeah. the coin's been issued? Are you guys doing an ICO? Are yeah, you so raising we're in the money? Middle, so we're in the middle of an ICO. Um, private? Private on, only for now. Uh, so we've raised just under $4 million. Uh, Great, congratulations. I have, no, I have no idea if that's good or not. It, it, well, it's better than the zero. It's better than zero, right? So <laughs> <laughs> it is better than zero, right? Uh, so so there's uh, interest, obviously. Yeah, so look, we, we've got a lot of interest in our product, and it, it, I think part of the interest is it's very simple. It's yeah. like, so a lot of people can go, I, I think this thing makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now, you know, does, does that mean we're going to be completely successful in taking over the world? I don't know. Well, I mean, you've you know. got some tailwinds in your back. One, yeah. the infrastructure and e-commerce and the things that you're going after right. are 20-year-old stacks. Yep. Number two, the business model and expectation of the users right. is shifting radically and expectations are different. Right. And there's no actual product that does it. So. Yeah. So, look, I, <laughs> I mean, a lot, of these ICOs, a lot of these ICOs, they're going to have, I think they're going to have technical problems actually building it to the specification. Because it's difficult. When you're dealing with the blockchain, first of all, you're building on sort of some movable platform, right? Yeah. I mean, some train, people, yeah. I met some people just today who are building on Hashgraph. Now, that's great, but Hashgraph is like one day old, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> you're building on something that is one day old, you know? <laughs> and they've just announced their coin five minutes ago, you know? Yeah. So, so it's, a, you know, again, that that's great, but, you know, normally as a developer myself, I'm used to building on things yeah. that are years old. I mean, even if something that's yeah. three years old is new, really. Well, I mean, look, there's momentum going on yeah. that, that someone might want to tout Hashgraph for it because it's got momentum. It's got so total momentum. They're betting on an ecosystem. Yeah. But that brings up the other thing I want to get your thoughts on because we've yeah. observed this at Polycom. We've been watching the industry landscape now on yeah. our 10th year. Um, there's almost an ecosystem stake in the ground. The good news is ecosystem's developing. You got entrepreneurs, yeah. you got projects, you got funding coming in but as it's going to be a fight for the ecosystem because you can't have zillion ecosystems. Eventually, they have well, to be, or you know, can here's you? Here's the problem. That everybody's focused on the plumbing right now, right? The infrastructure. But what they should be focusing on is the app, right? And I have a question for you, and I've asked this question to my advisors and investors, which are DNA Fund. And I said, Let's see if I get it right. It's a test here on the spot. I love this. Go. Okay, so here's the question. Go. How many in your wallet right now, on your mobile phone, Show me how many blockchain apps you have right now. Uh, zero on my okay, phone. Okay, zero. Well, I have a burner phone for my other one. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> but on any phone, on any phone that you possess, how many blockchain apps do you have on your phone? Wallet or apps? An app that uses zero. A, zero. Okay, zero. an app other than a wallet. Okay, zero, right? Yep. Every single person I've asked in this conference has the same number, zero. Yeah. Okay, so now think about this. Actually, if you I have one. Oh, uh, which one? Um, it's called Cubecoin. Okay. Okay, there you go, Cube yeah, Coin. But yeah. here's the problem: like, if you don't have, if you went to a normal, can I get Work Coin right now? Yeah, well, not right now, but I have it on my wallet. Okay, it's, I, is so it, for example, it's in test flight, right? Yeah. But like, my point is, I have a fully functional thing. I can go buy services, yeah, use yeah. the coin, everything, in, a, in an app. So, I think this is one of the so things. So hypothetically, that, if I had an application that was fully functional with blockchain, with cryptocurrency, with ERC2 smart contracts, I would be ahead of the game? You would be ahead of the game. I mean, I think- Great news, guys. And I think you you absolutely are thinking the right thinking, yeah. right? Because everybody's just looking at the plumbing. Yeah. And look, I love EOS, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's sort of a new operating system. Same well, as Hathcraft, but Fred. you need apps to run on your- First of all, I love, I love chatting with you, super smart. Folks out there, Fred is um, someone you should ch check out. Okay. Yeah, great advisor potential. 
I think you're, you're right on this. I want to test something out with you. I've been thinking sure. about this for a while. If you think about the OSI model, OSI yeah. stack, for the old younger kids, that was a key movement that generated the key standards in the stack for internet, internet networking and, and physical devices. So it started from the bottom up. Yeah. The top of the stack actually never standardized. It became you know, the presentation session layer. That's really, was kind of, they differentiated, then eventually became um, front end. Right. If you look at what's happening now, the top of the stack is really the ones that's standardizing or standardizing with business logic. The bottom of the stack has many different versions of, say, blockchain. So the question is, is that it might be the world that will never have a TCP IP moment. It might be that the business app logic will dictate to some sort of abstraction layer down to programmable plumbing. We see this with cloud with DevOps. So the question right. is, do you see it that way? I mean, I'm not, it's just, I mean, I'm thinking out loud here, but what I'm seeing the trend here is, is that people who make the business logic decisions first and nail those, that they're far more successful um, swapping I, out and hedging on the plumbing. Look, I think I think you're, what, you're, you're, you mentioned the word alpha geek, and I think you've just, you just defined yourself as an alpha geek. You know, basically, let's just, you know, go like in, uh, Denzel Washington said in the movie Philadelphia, talk to me like I'm a five-year-old, okay? <laughs> what is the problem you're solving, you know? So, the app, you, 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 know, you so said, my, it. My you point said is, it's the app. It, so my point is like, everybody is walking around with apps. If the thing doesn't, if the thing doesn't fit on an app, it's not solving any problem. Like that's, that's the bottom line. I don't care whether so you're- So this is, your, you're validating the concept that it, all that matters is the app, the plumbing, use will, case. The plumbing will sort itself out. Is that a dependency so. or is it an interdependency? Look, I, what do you need in a, in a plumbing? Here's what I think you should think. Networking do I need 4,000 transactions per second? I would say rarely, okay, rarely. It's yeah. not, most yeah. people are not sitting there going, I need to do 4,000 yeah. transactions per second. Yeah, if you need that, you've already crossed the, the finish line, right. you probably have a I proprietary mean, solution. Just, just to like put things in perspective, Bitcoin does 300,000 transactions per day. Well, why does Ripple work? Ripple works because they nailed the business model. I'll tell you what I think Ripple, why What's your Ripple take? works, okay? I think all, and I'm not the first person to say this, but I think that the thing that works right now, the core application of all this stuff is money, right? That's the core thing. Now, if you're talking about documents on the blockchain, is that going to be useful? Perhaps. Yeah. You know, real estate on the blockchain, perhaps. Poetry on the blockchain, maybe. Love on the blockchain, yeah. Hey, there's you know, crypto kitties on the blockchain. There is, Love right? is coming next. Love is coming next. But, the core killer app, the killer app, right, is money. It's paying people. That is the killer app of the blockchain right now, okay? So every single one of the things that's really successful is about paying people. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is super great for taking money and moving it out of China and into the United States or out of Nigeria and into Switzerland, right? You want to take $100,000 out of Nigeria and move it to Switzerland? Bitcoin is, the, is your answer. Now, you want to move money from bank A to bank B. Ripple is your answer, right? <laughs> if you want, if you want to mo move money from uh, Medellin, Colombia, that you use in Narcos, uh, Monero is probably your crypto of choice. You know, <laughs> this is truly anonymous. You know, so, and I think if you, if it's really about payment, right? And so, I look at Workcoin is what is the killer thing you're doing here? You're paying people. You're paying yeah. people for work. So, it's designed for that. So yeah. that's, I think it's. That's a simple. The killer app is money. Miko Metsamora would say, yeah. open source money, that's his narrative, yeah. love that vision. Okay, if money's the killer app, the rest is all kind of window dressing around, trying to I race think it's, to. I it's the killer, it's the initial killer app, right? Yeah. I think we need to get to the point where we all, not all of us, but where enough of us start transacting yeah. with money, with digital money, and then after digital money, there will be other killer apps, right? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like, if you look at the internet, uh, and again, I'm repeating somebody else's it's argument, Fred but Kruger's the internet hierarchy is- hierarchy of needs. Money- Money is, starts, right? In the, the initial baseline. thing, what was the first thing of internet? I was on the internet, before it was the internet, it was called the ARPANET in yeah. Stanford, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember these I do days. remember, yeah, I was but in college. But the ARPANET, it was email, right? We had the first versions of email, and it was back in 1986. Email was a killer app for 15, 20 years. It was the killer app, right? And for I think- For 15 or 20 years. For, absolutely, before, well, well yeah. before websites, yeah. you know? So I think we got to solve money first, you know? And I, I bless everybody who has got some other model and, and maybe they're right, you know? Maybe yeah. notarization of documents on the internet is... On. There's going to be use cases for blockchain, some obvious low-hanging fruit, but that's not revolutionary. That's not game-changing. What is game-changing is the promise of a new decentralized inter infrastructure. It's, it's, here's the cr great thing that's 
absolutely killer about, about what this whole world is. And this is why I'm very bullish. Is if you look at the internet of transmitting value from one node to another node, mm -hmm. credit cards do not do a very good job of that, right? So you can't put a credit card inside a machine very well at all, right? It doesn't work. And very simple reason, why? Because you get those Amex fraud alerts, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now the machine, if he's paying another machine, the second machine doesn't know how to interpret the first machine's Amex fraud, fraud yeah. alerts. So the machine has to pay the machine something that's immutable. I'm paying you a little bit of token. You know, and the classic example yeah. is the self-driving car that pays the, you know, the, 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 the gas pump, because it's a gas self-driving yeah. car, it pays it to fill up, and the gas pump may have to pay its landlord in rent. Yeah. And all of that is done with tokens, right? Yeah. And with credit cards, that does not work. Yeah. So it has to be tokens. Well, what credit cards did for other transactions, a little bit simplifies the things, there's a whole nother wave coming. I think, that I think yeah, I think. Just that, makes it easier and reduces the steps it reduces the friction, and that's why I think, actually the killer app is going to be marketplaces, because if you look at a marketplace, whether yeah. it's a, a marketplace like ours for, for freelancers, yeah. or your marketplace for virtual goods, like Wax, or whatever it is, right? Yeah. I think marketplaces where there's no friction, right? Where, where once you paid, it's in. There's no like, I want my money back, you know? Yeah. That is a killer app. It's an absolute killer app, and I think, yeah. I think we're going to see real massive consumer adoption with that, and that's ultimately, I think, that's what we need, because if it's all just business models and, and people touting their 4,000 transactions a second, that's not going to fly. Well, Fred, you have a great social graph that's socially proved. Uh, you've got great credentials, um, mathematics, PhD, and, and uh, from nine Stanford. Exits. You reinvent nine exits. How many exits? Nine exits. Nine exits. Uh, you're reinventing freelancing on the blockchain. You're an alpha geek, but you can also explain things to a five-year-old. <laughs> uh, great to have you on. Thank you very much, John. Talk about the work uh, coin, final word, get the final last, work coin. Get, the, get the plug in for work coin. Can, Look, people, can people lose it now? When is it going to be available? It's going to be available. Look, you can go check out our platform. And I, as Miko said, Miko's an advisor, and Miko said, Brad, think of it as a museum, right? You can come visit the museum. Yeah. We're not, you're not going to see a, a zillion, but you can do searches there, you can find people. The museum is not fully operational, right? Yeah. You can come and <laughs> check it out. You can take a look at the trains in the museum. The trains will finally operate once we're finished with our ICO. We can really turn the thing on and everything will work. And yeah, and then, and what I'd like you to do, actually, you can follow our ICO. If you're not American, you can invest in our ICO. Workcoin.net. 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 Okay. And, uh, you know, and then, and then really at the end, if you have some skill that you can sell on the internet, right, you're a knowledge worker, you can do anything, yeah. list your skill for sale, right? And then that's the first thing is we want to get, if you're a student at home, you might want to do, maybe you could do research reports. I used to be a starving student at Stanford, <laughs> as, you know, and I was, I was mainly spending my time in the statistics department. If somebody said, Fred, instead of grading undergrad papers, we'll pay you money to do a statistical work, for a company, I would be like, that would be amazing. Of course, nobody nobody said that. Yeah, so and I, if you can also have the ability to collaborate with someone quickly and do a smart contract, right. you can do some commerce, make paid. And get paid for it. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, hey, how about that, you know? <laughs> so I just see so Move many- Move from the TA grading papers payroll, yeah. which is like peanuts. But maybe make a little bit more yeah. doing something that's yeah. more relevant to my yeah. PhD, you know? So all I know is there's so many times where I've said, you know, my math skills are getting rusty, and I was like, I'd really wish I could talk to somebody who knew something about this distribution yeah. or could help and instantly me. instantly magically have them. And, and I can't even find them. Like, I have no idea. I have no idea how I'd go to, like, yeah. how I would go and find people at Stanford in statistics. I have no idea, right? Yeah. So if I could type Stanford statistics and find 20 people there, or USC statistics, yeah. or, you know, I mean, I mean, imagine that, right? Yeah. That could change the world. That lowers the barriers, friction barriers. To, everybody could be hiring graduates, too. Well, it's not just hiring, collaborating, too. Collaborating, yeah. Yeah, everything. A any question that you have, you yeah. know? Doctor doing cancer research might want to find someone in China or abroad. And or it's, a, the, it's a worldwide thing, right? So yeah. we, have to get, we have to get this platform so it's open, and so everybody kind of goes there, and it's like your identity on there. And then uh, there's no real boundary to how you know how we can get. Once we get started, I'm sure this will snowball. Fred, so, I really appreciate you spending you. the time, Thanks and I love your, your mission. Time. And we support you. Whatever you need, work coin. Uh, you get, we got to find people out there to collaborate with. Otherwise, you're going to get pushed fake news and fake data. Best way to find it is through someone's 
profile on WorkCoin. Thanks. I'm looking forward to seeing the product. I'm John okay. Furrier, here in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound, Restart Week, a lot of great things happening. Brock Pierce on the keynote this morning really talking about his new venture fund, Restart, which is going to be committed 100% to Puerto Rico. This is where the action will be. We will be following this exclusive story. Continuing, we'll be back with more. Thanks for watching. <laughs>